Hello and welcome everybody to our 21st Holding Space webinar. It's really lovely to have you here today. Whether you're coming to us live or watching this recording at a later time, I'd like to welcome you all to this space. And I hope this next hour is a productive and a fun one to learn some new skills and to engage with other people in this space. My name is Jackie Short. I'm the Clinical Director of Sydney Centre for Creative Change. And I'm very proud to be hosting these free webinars. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands that I come to you from today, the Eora people of the Gadigal Nation, and pay our collective respects to elders past, present and emerging. Today we have an exciting presenter for you. Our guest presenter is Heather Joy Campbell and she's going to be introduced in just a moment to you to run this 21st webinar today in the Holding Space series laughter therapy more than a little fun and we certainly will have more than a little fun today so great you can join us and to let you know what we're doing today so our focus today in our laughter therapy or laughter yoga session is going to be delivered by a wonderful woman Heather Joy Campbell who is a leading Australian laughter well-being practitioner and she uses laughter along with the science of happiness techniques to deliver well-being programs in person and online using the power of laughter. So I'd like to welcome you Heather Joy into this space now. Thank you so much for being with us today. Absolute pleasure. Heather, Joy, tell us a little bit about you and how you came across this because from what I'm aware of in your background, you didn't get born into the laughter um, laughter family necessarily. So how did you discover this? And, and tell us a little bit about your journey. Mm. Thank you, Jackie. Um, first of all, let me explain. Heather Joy is actually what my parents baptised me. They gave me that name at birth. Um, so it's no stage name, but maybe they had some prophecy. Um, <laughs> because... Yeah, that's, it, it's come true. Um, some years ago in my previous life, I was, a, I was a journalist and specifically I was a health reporter, uh, 30 years of, of writing about health issues. And um, I heard about laughter yoga about mm, 10 years ago. Laughter yoga has actually been around for 25, 26 years. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a moment. Um, and I was writing a story on the phone, pre-video um, conferencing, which was just as well, because I was on the phone to this wonderful woman in Geelong, and I'm in Brisbane. And I remember eyeball rolling as she was talking to me about it, <laughs> which is really embarrassing, but hey, it, you know, and then she said, you must experience this. And then I really remember doing eyeball roll because as a journalist, I'd always be on to the next story and not experience. But what I found was that a couple of days later, after filing the story, I was Googling and there was a laughter club, which is a social gathering of people who practice laughter yoga um, in a park in Brisbane. And I went along on the weekend and I haven't stopped laughing since. I hadn't realised how little I laughed, how stressed I was and how much, how much joyfulness really came from that saying laughter is good medicine. Mm. Fantastic. Mm. So tell us a little bit about what laughter yoga actually is. We know it's not downward dog, so what can you say <laughs> something? Yeah, maybe it's, it's easier to say what it isn't and then what it is. So laughter yoga is not about telling jokes. It's not about comedy. And it's, it's certainly not about doing um, a, what you'd call a, laugh, a, a yoga pose and laughing at the same time. But it's everything about breath, the breath work. It's about connection. It's about being playful. It's a concept that was an exercise concept that was developed by an Indian physician, Madame Kataria, and his wife, Madhuri, um, 26 years ago now. And uh, I, was, I was very fortunate to train with, with Dr. Um, Kataria in India. 
And he said to me, there was a lot of good medicine in laughter, but there was not much laughter in medicine. And so he developed this from a, um, a practice that was just in the park near his apartment in the morning with five people. And now it's a practice that is in 110 countries. And yet it's still a bit of a secret and very misunderstood. Um, so that there are four basic fundamental parts to the laughter yoga. You have the clapping, you have breath work, you have intentional laughter. So we're not laughing at something funny, we're laughing because we can. Um, we're using our laughter muscles, I like to call them. And, and there's some gentle stretching, just chanting. So we go, and may, may I invite you to try the, the clapping? Because oftentimes in our society, we clap like this, you know, polite. But when we clap in laughter yoga, we clap like little children do, with their full palms connecting like that. And you'll feel the difference. Can you feel it? You're activating little acupressure points. So when we start in laughter yoga, we'll often go something like, ho, ho, ha, ha, ha. Ho, ho, ha, ha, ha. Ho, ho, ha, ha, ha. And we do it with opening our mouths, uh, enabling us to really engage our diaphragm as we're exhaling. Do you want some of the science, Jackie, at this point? Sorry, do we want some of the... Would you like some of the science about why we're doing it like this? Yes, tell us the science. Oh. Yes. <laughs> well, when you're doing this, I'd love you to feel that you, you can open your mouth wide, okay? Because then you're going to be really accessing your deeper, your diaphragmatic muscle. If we can do an example in, in, in the safety of your room and always working within your own ability. So I don't know if you've got lung issues, but I'd like you to get in touch with your good vibrations for a moment. And you'll feel, you'll feel what's happening in your body, which oftentimes we're not really aware of. If you place your fingers just gently on your throat, as I am, take a deep breath, and then go, <laughs> and let the whole breath out. <laughs> you're feeling a vibration in your throat, okay? It's hard not to smile when you're doing it too. That's a really good thing. Then you put your hand on your chest. Yeah. And we take a deep breath and open our mouths. And we go, ha, 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 all the way out again. So we're feeling that. <laughs> oh. Then we place our hand on our belly. And a bit like Santa Claus, we take a deep breath in mouth wide open as we go ho ho we go ho, 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 so you felt the vibrations in your body happening now when we're doing laughter yoga we we are intentionally laughing i don't like using the term fake but we're not laughing at something that is that is funny, other than we're acting childlike, not childish, um, and we're acting playfully. What we are, um, we're not we're not being stimulated by the comedy and the humour. Now, you, you know, little children, they you know three three and four year olds, they laugh according to one of the studies about 300 times a day because life is curious and they know that it feels good to laugh and so they do they laugh because oh the world is so exciting and yes let's you know and 
we tend to get a little bit too serious in life and it's um, Fortunately, and I'm sure you see it in your in your professional lives and your practices, um, children are becoming much more serious far sooner. And yes, there are reasons to be serious, and there are some awful things happening in the world. But the fact that you know, come on, we've got to get going, and don't laugh at that because that's not funny. And you know, they're taking away this basic, basic thing we have, which is as natural as breathing. It's called laughter. And it's a little, it's like having our own dose of joyfulness. So by the time we get to middle age, well, the science tells us that we're lucky if we're laughing about 12 times a day compared to 300. And that's if we're lucky. And those laughs tend to be short, sharp titters, you know. <laughs> You know, that sort of thing. Instead of, and what we're doing with laughter yoga is we're not taking laughter as a chance. We're actually saying, I'm going to laugh. Not something comedic. I mean, you can go along to a comedy club and it may not make you laugh because maybe, you know, you find offence and um, language offensive or you know, culturally it doesn't fit with you because comedy and humor have all of those um those learnings whereas laughter as we do it is just tapping into our laughter muscles gotcha yeah okay so what the science is telling us a little bit i, I love i love the science and actually, it was, I heard from Dr. Kataria on Sunday that the Laughter Yoga, Laughter Yoga International, which is based in India, is going to be collaborating and doing work with um, the University of California, Berkeley, where um, so much research in positive psychology and um, well being is being done. They're going to specifically be doing laughter yoga research but what we know already um, last year i wrote a blog uh, 25 benefits because it was the 25th anniversary and it ranged from heart health um, as reported in by the university of maryland in their research because when you're laughing for a sustained period um, the, the your blood vessels are dilating so the blood works through your your body um, more freely and um, the improvement in short-term memory thank you loma linda university has been doing a lot of work in america uh, japanese studies that have been looking at um, how it can improve blood glucose levels for type 2 diabetes um, and I love, 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 love Stanford University's research, um, which has shown that 10 minutes of hearty, sustained laughter, as we do in laughter yoga, is the cardio equivalent of 30 minutes on a rowing machine. Yes! <laughs> yes! I know which one I prefer. At this point, could we have a chat? Yes or no? <laughs> But, so these are some of the physical. But what about the emotional and the psychological impacts? Um, what I noticed when I was reading the medical, the, the published journal articles, was that many of the physical benefits were coming about because stress was diminished, um, which is fantastic. And I know from my sessions, that I do for my clients. Um, I ask them to report on how relaxed are you feeling? How's your mood? And how much energy do you have before a session and after a session? And regularly there are, it, it, it's up, it's up and it's up. The relaxation is up, the stress is down, the mood is up. Um, there's a lot of good medicine in, in love. 
Uh, but depression and anxiety um, can be eased. It is basically a form of mindfulness. When you are laughing, you are in the moment. Um, it can help build resilience. We do some exercises, and I'm not talking about a one-off session, obviously. This is, it's, it's another tool, basically. Um, we can do some exercises that are about what I call values-based, um, and they're like turning on a positivity switch. And in Rwanda, you know, a country that had had so much, so much um, unrest, so much conflict, they use laughter yoga not only to build resilience, but also to build trust between the what were warring ethnic groups. They work together and they're using laughter yoga for that purpose. I think that's pretty special. It builds connection um, and there's no language barrier. So there's some pretty good benefits. Now, Jackie, can we do a few little exercises or have, are there questions already coming through? I've got a question, Heather Joy. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about the relationship between motion and emotion? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm sure we've had days when we feel like we're having a doona. We just want to have a doona day. Anyone going to admit this, that? Ah. <laughs> oh. And oftentimes I will have a client or work in a group and they'll say, I've got nothing to laugh about or I don't feel like doing this. And we know that if you, if you stay in what I call the fuck, it will just stay there. You need something to move it out. I'm not going to, I don't talk technical, I'm sorry, but <laughs> I know from the experience that a you don't need to be in the mood to do the laughter yoga. It's rather like when I go to a gym, I may not feel like doing a bicep curl, but I do it. Because I'm just using that muscle and I feel so much better for having moved it. The connection between emotion and motion is very profound. Mm. Okay. Oh, what's happening here? So, will we do do a few exercises. Which I may, before we do the exercises, talk about how adaptable it is, because we're all born with this ability to. Um, we're born with the ability to laugh. Yeah. As long as we can breathe, we can laugh if you take away that thought of it has to be funny and yes i see a question coming up i feel i feel so much better after singing all is ollie yes absolutely the benefits of singing and the benefits of laughter are very very similar and the training we do for our lungs similar very similar so if you tend to be a singer you may well like your laughter too. Um, and you'll know the uplifting feeling. Because what's going on is we are having, our, our mind is not, our, our brain is not discerning the difference between uh, a laugh that we're going, oh, that's funny, <laughs> and a laugh that we do intentionally. <laughs> it just gets the message after about 10 minutes that, the person is laughing and I am going to start to do it. The brain says, I know I know what I need to do. I need to release the feel-good hormones. So we're going to have a dose of happiness. We're going to have the dopamine, the oxytocin, the serotonin, and the endorphins. So it's not just endorphins that are going, going off. We've got this lovely little happy chemical workshop going on. And you get that when you're singing and you get that when you're laughing. But again, with singing, Oftentimes we, you know, I know I sing a lot around the house, but people don't sing, we feel self-conscious. 
So this is a way of helping us to lose that self-consciousness as well. When I've spoken about adaptability and accessibility, um, I, I work in, I go into workplaces and do team building and stress busting sessions online and in person. I go into mental health units. I go into aged care, particularly dementia units, where it's oftentimes the clients are, yeah, they've already reverted to maybe their, their mother tongue, but they remember how to laugh. Um, I personally, I'm talking about my experiences in homeless shelters, just um, in shelters for domestic violence. Um, I have trained some nurses who are now delivering it during dialysis sessions to take the, the patient's minds off the process of their dialysis and, and to ease any pain and ease any um, stress in their bodies. It's also being used in prisons overseas. Um, it's being used in police forces overseas. It's generally being, it's used in hospitals um, for staff as well as for patients. It's very adaptable. How can it be adaptable? Because we can do it either seated or standing. I love doing the standing one because it's really active. I do them in the park every Saturday morning in my community, uh, as well as when I do workplace. And then we're gonna, we do it seated and more and a far more gentle, slower session. Um, and working with people with disability, um, people who, who may not get a joke for intellectual impairment or who, who can't, who have mobility issues. We, I can work with that. I do work with that. So, but up here, we're working with up here, what's going on in the mind how they're feeling, yeah. So, do we do some, do we do some exercises? Let's just try with the ho-ho and the ha-ha. So get you used to the idea of just making the sound without, the, without it being something you're laughing at because it's funny. Can we just try that? So take a deep breath. And for as long as you, you can, go. And sometimes you may well need to have a big breath when you're doing that. <laughs> but you're emptying your lungs, about 20% more stale old air is being pushed out through the exhalation of laughter as opposed to a big breath out. <gasps> okay, so let's try that one more time. Then we're going to do a little bit of playfulness. <laughs> and really open up your mouth. <laughs> oh, that was very good, very good. Yay, let's congratulate ourselves. Very good, very good, yay. Very good, very good, yay. <laughs> if you don't take nothing more of the exercises than that, how good is it after a really tough client session or a difficult phone call or something like that? Go, Yay! It feels great. All right. So a couple of the exercise, have we got any, is there another question that came up? No, that was about the I mean, yeah, okay. Um, this is ex. I couldn't do it as fast as you did. No, oh, Rhea, no, no. Bear in mind that I do this every single day and have been for about 10 years, right? So all you're trying to do 
and you work within your own ability always, 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 your client's ability and your ability. Um, whether you practice any of this for your own health, it causes you to feel a bit dizzy. I'll, I'll talk to you about that in just one moment. The thread is work within your own. Dizziness, yeah, there's a lot of stale old air going out and you need to be able to just peg it back a little bit and take a few deep breaths. In fact, we might do that right now. I'm sure all of you do um, different breath work and um, some mindful practices. I'd like you to invite you to do one with me that I call the tidal breath. And I start with my hands out in front. And I call it tidal because it's like the tide coming in. And I use the hands as a visual cue. So my hands come towards my shoulder as I'm breathing in through the nose and I slowly breathe in through the nose. And really breathing in and working, making sure it's a deep breath so that your shoulders aren't coming up here. Yeah, so it's a nice, slow, uh, deep breath. And then the exhalation, the hands come out again. And we open our mouth and that and get out, beautiful. And we come in again, we do this for maybe three deep breaths. One more. And like a photographer, I said one more, but we're going to do one more deep breath in in a moment. Take the breath in and hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. And laugh it out. <laughs> Very good, very good. Yay! That's an exercise you can do and maybe that you could take away with you to just again, you're not having to having to be in a good mood or having something to laugh at. It's really easy, super easy. I love the ones where we can stretch a little bit. And I thought I'd share the the 1.5 meter laugh. I've been having a lot of fun. Fun with exercises um, dealing with people's stress levels during COVID. So, you know, <laughs> you're welcome, Yvonne. We're going to take, say, our left hand out. If you can, hold it straight out. And your right hand comes over to touch your left. So, like that. And we bring our right hand to the elbow. We go, eh. And then to the shoulder, we go, eh. And then to the other shoulder, we go, eh. And then we unfurl and we go, <laughs> Now that distance is about 1.5 meters. So that's our social, that's our physical distance thing measure. I'd love to go through the supermarkets, walking around like this saying, don't you come near me. <laughs> do you want to do it again? Nice and smoothly together. We'll go, eh. Eh, eh. <laughs> we'll go to the other side. We'll just do it one more time. Eh, eh, eh. <laughs> very good, very good. Yay! Very good, very good. Yay. Very good, very good. Yeah. I one of the exercises um, that I do that's adaptable in all all settings is milkshake. And you imagine you have two tumblers in your hands, like so. And I'll just run through this and you tip. So you're actually doing a little bit of a stretch if you can. You go, eh. 
air, you're pouring from one side to the other, and air, so you've got this nice gentle movement happening, and then you throw your head back, throw it back, open your mouth really wide, because then you're going to be using your diaphragm. <laughs> It's like the Bob Hawke, um, the Bob Hawke skull, you know. <laughs> but that's a really nice movement to it. It's gentle, and it's playful, and <laughs> and it's a bit early in the day for me to take you to the um, the laugh tail version. So I'll leave that one maybe to the end. Um, <laughs> um, Another couple of exercises. So usually when you're doing a laughter yoga session, whether you're wanting to do this just for yourself or with somebody else, you'd always have eye contact, you keep the smile and you keep it going. And you sustain the laugh for anything from 30 seconds to a minute to two minutes, but you keep the laughter happening. And the session is about 20 minutes of solid laughter. So it's not going to go blah, 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 okay? I really enjoy mental floss. So we know about dental flossing. Mental flossing, you imagine you've got a piece of floss and you imagine that you just put it between your ear holes. Okay? Yeah. And as you move from side to side, you start to laugh. As you remove those unhelpful thoughts, thought is wrong it just may not be very helpful and you laugh <laughs> and some may be really stubborn you know <laughs> they've been here a long time <laughs> and you can keep this one going as long as you like or as long as you need but you make sure you're laughing <laughs> yes and it actually does make you laugh that is what that's the secret when we're doing this in an actual session, when you're doing this in an actual session, you start with this intentional laugh and then the absurdity of it all sometimes, you start to laugh at yourself. You're laughing because it is fun, it is playful and it's natural laughter that then flows and that continues on so you build it. But, you know, so many people think, I've got nothing to laugh about. Hmm? Yes, yes. Uh, I, Irene, is it? Yeah. Um, I work with primary school students. This would be great to use. Yes. In fact, in um, uh, I'm trying to. One of my colleagues in Adelaide is doing some work with a, an actual program for its. It's rollout in in some of the schools or the the kindies, um, and uh, she's a school teacher. And in India, they use laughter. In some of the states of India, they use laughter yoga first thing in the morning for all of the students to get some energy out and settle, and then at the end of the school day to ground them. And the teachers say they're feeling a lot more settled their behavior is more focused they and, and the teachers are loving it yes i see some comments about teenagers and yeah it can be awkward i've done some with in high schools which is one area where uh, is i don't come with a teaching background um preschoolers absolutely they love it as do the preschool teachers. In high school, what I found the trick was to get those cool kids to get on board with it. And once you've got the peers, you've got the, the cool kids, the others follow. So yeah, you have to mix these up. There's, there's, you know, there is training involved just as with any, any tool, but this is a tool that can be used to engage, whether it's one-on-one, -on -one, or whether it's in a small group or whether it's in a huge group. You know? So I could personally I do one on ones, I do groups online, I do, um, but in person, anything from up to three hundred people. 
So, um, yeah, it, it's very adaptable. Different exercises, hundreds of exercises. And then you can make the exercises up as you go. As long as you stick to the, the, the basics of you've got the clapping, you've got the deep breath, you've got the laughter. Um, let's play with one. I'm aware of time. We're going into a breakout room in a moment. But you need, you need this if you're in traffic. This one, Ken? Oh, sorry, I'm losing questions. Um, where is it held in Brisbane? Yes, okay. We, we can answer that one in a moment. Jackie, can I just give you this one? Uh, I think I saw someone living out near Ipswich and the traffic isn't as bad, but in Sydney, oh, imagine you're behind the wheel of a car. Okay. Now, what happens when you get to a red light ordinarily? And you're running late, you know, that sort of thing. You get a bit frustrated. Red light, green light is this exercise. So we're going to pretend we're driving. When I say red light, just laugh. So we're driving, it's green light. Red light. <laughs> green light. You can't laugh. Whoa, no laughter during the green light because that's dangerous. But red light, you're not, when you're laughing through that red light, you're not getting frustrated. You're not getting annoyed. You're not getting angry. You're just accepting it for what it is. I will stop driving now. <laughs> and by the time you get to the to your destination, you're not all wound up and 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 you know and anxious and pent up. You're relaxed. You're feeling really good. Um, so that's a nice little tip. That's a laughter yoga one. Now, if there's some questions in Jackie, what, where are we at? Let's see. Question. So I think you've, you've covered a lot of the questions, Heather Joy, which is fantastic. There was a question here from Yvonne. Can laughter therapy be used in trauma work? I don't know if you want to answer that or if you'd like me to give you a hand with that one. Or um, I would like a hand with that one. I have, I have done some sessions very gentle sessions um, when it's been DV. Um, that would be the limit of the trauma work and gosh, that's, that's, I'm not saying there's a limit to, but that's been my experience, it's been in that area. Um, and in those sessions, uh, and they have been all women um, who have been experiencing violence, um, I have adapted the exercises to be about self-worth and loving themselves. And laughing with them. Lovely adaptation. Thank you. Um, we've got time for a few more questions before we move into a breakout room, and then Heather Joy is going to finish with some other uh, an, another exercise in closing off. A uh, question here from Ollie: Does laughter often turn to crying? Yes, it can be cathartic. Absolutely. Um, um, when? Oh gosh. A couple of years ago, I'm just going to go for an experience. Um, I was asked to present at an agriculture, a women in agriculture conference interstate. Um, and, you know, they'd been drought. There were women who had been yeah, in drought. They hadn't had anything to laugh about. And I was talking about lots and lots of things, but we were doing some laughter. And there, was, there were a lot of tears. And I thought, ooh. And then I realized, and then they were saying that just felt wonderful. We feel like this load has been lifted off our shoulders and, and these tears are tears of joy and relief. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for, for addressing each of those questions that have come through so so honestly and with some really practical examples of how they've been used, Heather Joy, and it's really fantastic. Um, if anyone does have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat and I know Heather Joy can answer those, if not now, when we come back from the breakout rooms. But in a few moments, you're going to be invited into a room with two or three other people. And I'd like you to share two things, if you could. I'd like you to share if you've had any experience yourself with laughter yoga because I can see a few people 
um, have mentioned in the chat and to me outside of this that they've done some sessions maybe when they've been traveling or been interstate or they found a local group in a park and they've really benefited so have you experienced this before and what was your experience and even if you haven't based on what Heather Joy has generously shared with us today how could you use any of this for yourself or for others that you might be working with or in your more immediate networks so have you had an experience and how could you use some of this? Are the two questions I'd get you to each reflect on. I wonder if anyone would like to share what they discussed with others in that breakout room. Just give us a wave and I'll ask you to unmute. If you'd like to share something of what you shared or what you heard from others. Uh, Anne, yes, do you want to unmute? I was just thinking that it would be a really fantastic icebreaker if you have in a group session, like a support group uh, for people that they're all very nervous, M amazing way to shift the mood and to start on a really positive foot. Absolutely. Great application. Thanks, Anne. Yes, good. I know a lot of people are running groups, psychoeducation groups or therapy groups or just connection groups. This would be a great starter for or great finish for as well. So thanks, Anne. Any other applications that you discussed in your groups? I think it would be lovely to do these uh, in between sessions with clients. I myself doing that as part of my self-care. Wonderful, lovely. Thanks, yeah. Adriana. Yeah, that's wonderful to, to use for yourself, but also as a homework exercise for people. Lovely way of, of looking after ourselves. Beautiful. Thank you. Any other applications might be different to these? How to use it in childcare? Yeah. Or with student session beautiful to kind of like um ice break or just like just to kind of like break the tension or maybe big feelings as well that they might be experiencing yep lovely great applications thank you all for for sharing those that's wonderful um oh ollie did you want to say something as well yeah i i just realized again that my singing teacher said to me um many years ago she said uh that when you sing, you have to think a bit like a baby or, or think of a lot of the sounds that you're making almost like animal sounds. So it's not about being beautiful. It's about um, playing with your voice. So even doing baboon sounds or dog sound like, oh, oh, oh. And that releases certain muscles that then allow you to sing. So just an extension of that. Yes. So release, obviously, it's a muscle release, but also the emotional release that comes with making those sounds can be very powerful. I think there's a lot of self-consciousness often around making sounds or noise. So aren't we lucky we're on Zoom on mute? Nobody has to hear any of the crazy sounds we've been making. But the more we can feel comfortable and model that for others, the more they're likely to be loosened up and to, to play with that too. And it is a really playful way of working. Um, Heather Joy, is there anything you want to say in response to any of these comments or applications oh I'm, I'm just loving the the variety of applications because yes it it is just as diverse the, the only limit is our imagination how which is also what comes out with laughter yoga when we're looking at creativity and we're looking at ways of um problem solving in a different sort of style um yeah. which is so appropriate for mental health workers. And I know that's the majority yes. of us in the community yes. here. So mm -hmm. thank you so much for that presentation. And we know you're going to finish us today with another exercise. A few things that I'd like to, um, to share before we uh, do start to wind up. And as I mentioned, uh, there'll be a prize giveaway in a moment. But if you're interested in uh, making contact with Heather Joy, she's got a website and email address. She does face-to-face -face training and there's a link there to Laughter Yoga International and she'll tell you which park in Brisbane she's in uh, that you can go to should you be in the neighbourhood and want to join her weekly group. So I know she does an online group as well weekly, so I'm sure she'll give us details about that at the end. Mm -hmm. Had an opportunity to connect in with one another, which is lovely. And I want to tell you a little bit about some of our upcoming events, some of our free and paid events. Our next holding space webinar will be in a month. So we're doing these every month, different days and different times to suit the presenters and ideally the audience also. We have a fantastic presenter who's an artist and psychologist from the Ukraine. Some of you might know of um, 
Katrina and know of her work and have bought some of these beautiful hand painted stones. She's going to be talking about how she paints these stones on Greek marble and how she uses them in her sand play and other therapy work. So please do feel free to sign up for that if you'd like to in March. We've also got a free information evening coming up next week on Thursday. And that's for our next intake in August this year of the Graduate Certificate in Play and Art Therapy. So for those interested, or if you know of anyone who's interested in registering as a play therapist in Australia, then that's a good thing to come along to. So our March intake is now full, starting in a few weeks, but we will be taking an intake in August also. So it's a free night to find out more about that. You can book for any of these on our website online. We've also got an art therapy group that we're running, a five-week group on consecutive Thursday nights starting early March. A supervision group for six months, also starting in March. March is a busy month. And uh, what I'd like to do now is offer somebody a free webinar. So this is a new webinar we're running this year, Drama Therapy for People with Dementia. So practical ways of working with people who are just being assessed as having dementia and people who might be more severe with the um, manifestation of that too. So very practical and interactive, non-verbal ways that we can help these people. So that's in March um, and somebody's going to win this in just a moment. So to win this webinar or to win it to be able to gift it to a friend, what I'd like you to do is to look around exactly where you're sitting right now. So somewhere within arm's reach. Sometimes we do these PD presentations, we come along and we do training and we think that's a great idea and then we forget about it. What is something within arm's reach you can grab right now that can remind you of laughter yoga? So when you see it, you will be reminded to practice a bit more. Something that you can grab right now. What is it? And I'm just going to pick out one of these, one of you at random who's holding it? something up. Um, <laughs> so if you can keep your mics again on mute just for a moment and uh, let's see what we have here. Um, Gabby, everyone's got some fabulous things here, but um, Gabby, do you want to unmute and tell us what you've got there? Hi, um, I got just like a person model. Yep. And I can put in whatever shape I want and make silly shapes. And I think it's going to kind of like remind me to kind of bring a little bit of luck to my life. And I can make whatever shape I want and I can just, I'll probably put in a very funny shape so I can remember to maybe give a little bit laugh out, maybe between my sessions as well. So Great. excellent. I think I think you'll be you'll be our lucky winner for today. So thank you, Gabby. I'll send you details so that you can access that webinar. So let's give Gabby a virtual round of applause. Well done. A full full hand clap. So we're stimulating all of those pressure points. Beautiful. Excellent. Wow. Thank you very much. So um, we're We've got a, a quick quiz to do, and then Heather Joy is going to see us out with a final exercise. So the quiz, if you would like a PD certificate for an hour for today, please um, do two things. So do our true and false. I'm going to ask you three questions. If you can grab something, anything that you've got green in your room at the moment, um, something green that you can hold up and something red that you can hold up, so I'll know, or you can just put a T or an F into the chat box. That's fine too, just to make it a bit more interactive. So if it's if you think the answer is true, hold up green or true. If it's false, hold up red or type in false. You've only got to get 80%, so three out of the four of these, two out of the three of these, correct, to get your PD certificate. And then I'll get you to put your name in the chat as we're finishing up so we know who to send them to, because not everyone wants a PD certificate, that's fine. But if you do, put your name in the chat. So question number one, laughter therapy developed in, in India 26 years ago. True or false? True, that's right, good. Number two, when delivering laughter yoga, it's very important to talk a great deal before and after each of the activities so people really understand what you're doing. No, we don't want to talk too much. Heather Joy said we want to do it, not talk about it. Great. And number three, laughter therapy is about breath work and connection. True, excellent, good. Everyone who wants it gets a certificate there. So type your name into the, into the chat box there. And I'd like to thank you all for being here today and participating so fully. So full bodied belly laugh 
participatory, wonderful. And uh, Heather Joy, would you like to see us out with a final exercise and, and a word about where people can find you in Queensland? Yes. All right, before we do the exercise, um, laughter, the laughter club that I run is in the suburb of The Gap in Brisbane. It's 9 a.m. start, it's at Waterworks Road. There is a Facebook page for it. And best of all, it's free. It's gold coin donation, which goes back to community. So I do it as a volunteer, as a, um, a give back. Um, but you'll find um, the Gap Laughter Club or the Happy Demic. There was a Happy Demic before there was a pandemic um, on Facebook as well as um, my website. Um, I also do every Sunday at six o'clock, I do a Zoom. And you'll find the details on Eventbrite if you look for Heather Joy's Laughter Yoga Playroom. And that's, um, that's 30 minutes, very interactive. People last week were from the UK, Portugal, Greece, Mackay, Melbourne, wherever, you know. But let us do our last laugh because it's coming up to lunchtime where down south. So I said we were doing the milkshake. We're going to go to the grown-ups version now. Grab your cocktail shakers, please. You're going to put a little bit of ho, 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 ho. A bit of ha, 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 ha. A bit of hee, 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 Put the lid on. Shake it. Ha, 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 And enjoy. <laughs> no RBT. <laughs> Pure health. <laughs> Thank you so much, Heather Joy. That's fantastic. Lovely to see you all and look forward to seeing you again next time. Bye now. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.